Since it's almost Father's Day, I want to share with you a masterpiece that I did, hoping that you will have some idea or want to do this, and I'm going to show you in detail. Here are some products that I'm going to need for this project. The first one going to be a chalkboard paint. Next thing going to be a lace yarn. I got it from Daiso. Another product I'm going to use is a chalk to write it on the board. And I'm going to need a wire brass and a hammer, then a scissors. And lastly, a wooden board. You can definitely find this at Michael Art and Craft. I already have one laying around of a previous project that my friend did for me, but unfortunately, I lost the photo of us, so I'm going to reuse this board. Make sure to shake the bottle before pouring out the ink for a great consistency. The best method to apply this paint is horizontally and as you can see, I just go in one direction back and forth making a sweeping motion. By the way, I have a scrap paper that lay on the bottoms of the wooden board just to make sure I don't get any paint on my table. I'm trying my best to apply even coat as possible and apparently I'm not doing a great job but it's okay if I keep adding more products on top and brushing it out, eventually it's going to be eaten. I would say that this is my favorite part from the project. It is really relaxing. I know that the video looked kind of intense and I speed up the process, but if you are going to do it, it's really fun. Once I'm complete with the top layer, now I'm going to work on the side. Using the same method of applying the paint horizontally, I'm just going to apply it all around the edge. If I have a second chance of doing this, I'm pretty sure I would pick up a different size of the scrap paper. I was super scared because it's so thin around the edge, I do not want the paint to get all over my desk. Once I'm satisfied with my masterpiece, I have to wait at least one hour in order to paint a second layer. And yes, you do need to paint a second layer to make sure that it's going to cover any imperfection. One way to figure out if the paint is dry is that if it's still wet, it's going to have a shiny layer and once it's dry, it's going to turn to matte. Or another method that I used to do, well, it's pretty messy, is that I would touch it with my fingers. I know this is not the best method, but I'm just going to give you options. And once again, we are repeating the same technique of applying a thin layer on top. And this is the second coat just to make sure it's even and also is going to cover up any imperfections and try to be consistent as possible. I'm going to speed up to the maximum and not waste your time so we can move on to the next process. <laughs> But just letting you know, you definitely have to wait at least 30 to 1 hour for the paint to dry in order to begin the next process. I'm going to grab a blank sheet of paper and fold it in half. I'm just going to make sure that the both sides of the edge are even so I could able to have a straight line. Place the wooden boards on top of the white sheet of paper and place it toward the ends and make sure that the mid sections of the wooden boards going to meet perfectly in the middle of the white sheet of paper. I'm going to use a pencil and draw an outline of this wooden board, both at the top and also at the bottom. Once I drew the outline, I'm going to fold this piece of paper in half just to be sure that it's going to be right in line. So I could able to find the midpoint and it's easier for me to draw a heart. I'm going to count three lines above the mid sections and I'm going to start my heart around there. And I'm just trying my best to make sure my heart look good. Once I'm satisfied with the result, instead of having to draw the other heart on the other side, I'm just going to grab a scissors and cut along the outline and I'm just going to fold it in half on the other side and trace it out with a pencil. With this method right here, I'm going to have amazing result making sure both sides of the heart are going to be even. Yes, I'm not the best drawer in both hearts to be even, so by doing this would definitely help a lot. Then I'm going to grab several pieces of tapes and trying to tape this broken heart together. Once again, I'm going to grab the scissors and trying to cut out both of the outline from the top and the bottoms and I'm going to place it on top of the board with a piece of tape on the side holding it together. 
This is the first time I ever dealing with a hammer, so definitely wish me luck with this little tiny nail and not poke any hole into my finger. I'm going to use this applicator that specialized for my fake eyelashes, but who cares? I'm just going to make the use out of this product instead of holding it and stabbing myself. I like to start in the middle and obviously at this point I choose the bottom first and also I'm going to do the same toward the top but I would just want to make sure it's going to be perfectly in line. So whatever I built on the bottoms I also want to make sure it is perfectly horizontally in place on the top. Depend on the side of your fingers that's where you are going to give enough space for the nails because later on whenever you are going to loop the thread around you need an extra space. I noticed that it's much easier to work on the left side of the heart first and notice that whenever I apply the nail, it's not all the way down yet. I'm going to take it on the floor and actually hammer it down later on because if I'm going to put too much pressure on the table, I'm probably going to break it. And by the way, I gained more confidence of handling the hammer. So instead of using the applicator to hold the nails, I decided to use my finger instead. And yay, halfway done and more to go. So instead of working on the right side, I'm going to flip the heart upside down and still working only on the left side. Just try your best to place the nail on similar locations as the other side, making sure both sides is symmetrical. I know that mine is not perfect, but at least I put all the efforts and that's what is count. And ta-da, we almost done. Now it's time to add some threads and make it sparkles. I will start in the middle and at the tip of the heart and I'm going to do a double loop making sure that it's going to stay and be secure. I'm going to bring the thread straight up in the middle and do a double loop. Once I go into the bottoms as a zigzag, I'm going to do from the left to the middle of a double loop and once again I'm going to bring it straight up doing left over right and whenever I'm going down it's going to be left over right. And once again, it's going to be left over right and I'm going to repeat that step until I reach toward the outer edge of the right part. I'm just sharing with you how I did it but seriously you can always do whatever you want as long as it looks good and it's all matter because your effort is what is count. Once I reach toward the destination, I'm going to bring back the thread where I begin. Instead of having to do from the top and also the bottom, I'm just going to bring it straight down using the outline. And I still want to create a cool pattern, that's why you still see a zigzag. And as you notice, if I loop one on the right side, I'm going to loop on the opposite side which is the left side and I will continue. Either you can think that you are drawing an H or an affinity symbol. So let's begin doing the same patterns as the opposite side. I'm going to bring the thread up and do a double loop from right over left and whenever I'm bringing it down, it's also going to be right over left of a double loop. And once I bring it up, I'm going to do a right over left twice and bring it down. I'm going to repeat this step until I reach toward the left corner. And gradually you will definitely see the pattern starting showing up and just making sure whenever you are looping around you want to press the thread all the way down toward the bore because we do need space whenever we add a second layer on top. Instead of having to bring the thread back to the starting point, I'm just going to create a second layer but still copying the same pattern. As we bring the pattern to the other side, instead of having to go right over left, now it's time for left over right. And also bring it up, it will be left over right. And once again, whenever we bring it down, it's left over right in a double loop. I'm pretty sure whatever I'm saying now it seems pretty crazy and confusing but whenever you start and do it you can definitely see the pattern start to change if you did not copy exactly what I did. I'm going to speed this process up until we meet toward the mid section. Pay attention to this because I almost messed it up. Instead of bringing it toward the right, I'm going to have to bring it up in the middle once again and then bring it down in order to have a similar pattern. Now we finally work on the right side of the heart. So whenever I'm looping around, it will be from left over right. That's the same for both on the top and also on the bottom. I'm going to show you carefully before I'm speeding up. So on the bottom is left over right. And then on the top will be left over right loop. 
and once again on the bottom it would be left over right. Repeat the step until we reach toward the corner. The pattern is getting a little bit boring so I want to jazz it up. Instead of repeating the same old pattern as the other two layers, I want to go right across and create another pattern right on top. So I'm just going to do one loop over and gradually if the camera starts to focus you will be able to see it much better. This will allow the heart to have more dimension and structures. The hardest part is always once I reach toward the minute and try to mirror the other side. Another thing that I've got to mention is that whenever you're dealing with this kind of thread, it is super easy that this will get loose if you are not holding it tight enough and all your hard work will be a waste. Before we begin another layer, make sure you want to press the thread down all the way toward the board so you have enough room. Apparently the footage was kind of blurry where we left off but what I'm doing here is basically creating a fence and so we left off around the left corner and toward this point is basically I'm just going around and looping from left to right and then I'm going to press it down for the board. If I took out this white sheet of paper, you will not see the shape of the heart clearly. So by doing outline of the heart, it's going to show the detail and it looks much better. I would not recommend for you to start doing an outline of the shape that you're doing at the beginning. You want to do it toward the ends. Once I go around the heart, now I'm going to create the second layer of the outline. And instead of creating the same pattern as before, I'm going to do a zigzag. So either you can think of an infinity or a number eight, whichever convenience for you. And I'm going to repeat that same patterns all around. You can definitely stop at this point, but I'm just being extra and I really like my heart detail to really stand out. That's why I'm going to add another pattern right on top, very similar to the pattern that we did before. So it's going to look nice and thick. My goal is somehow bring the thread all the way down toward the end so I can actually tie it and loop it and secure it in place. But it seemed like I went another mile and do another outline and it's a zigzag, same thing as we did before, but I actually went all around and meet toward the middle. Finally, I have reached my destination so I'm going to give it some room and actually use a scissors and cut the extra thread off. At this point, I definitely have to be careful because I don't want the thread to be loose and fall off. So I'm just going to tuck it in between another thread and do another zigzag and meet toward the ends. You can actually use a tweezer to do this. What I'm doing here is basically loop around the ends and this is going to help everything stay secure. That's my goal. So I just went above and beyond making sure everything going to stay in place. I'm going to grab the two loose ends, then chop it off the excess with a scissors, and I'm going to tuck it inside to hide my imperfection. Now is my favorite time, which is a little bit difficult, is peeling off the white piece of paper. And as you notice in the middle, it's kind of hard to take it off, so be patient and grab the outer layer first. Then I'm going to grab a bobby pin and actually tuck it under and trying to take off the piece of paper that inside the best I could. Then I was able to grab every piece of paper that should not stay there. And seriously looking at it is so satisfying. So now I'm going to write Happy Father Day. So I'm going to get a chalk because apparently this is a chalkboard. So I can able to use a chalk and write on it. The best thing about writing on this board is that if you're going to make mistakes, don't worry, you can always use a wet napkin or a wet towel to wipe it down. This is a perfect gift for anyone and it's perfect for any occasions that either are going to be Father Day, Mother Day, Sister Day, Boyfriend Day, you name it. Whatever you want, it is perfectly for that. I'm going to add some more heart on the side to show more love. At this point, be creative. You can definitely do whatever you want, whatever you like because it's yours and you're going to give it your masterpiece to someone and they will appreciate your art. To clean around the edge of the word, I'm going to use a wet Q-tips and trying to dust away any imperfection. I'm so happy with this masterpiece and I cannot wait to give it to my dad. It's definitely easier for me just to go out and buy him something, but whenever you're creating for someone special, it is so meaningful. 
I hope you enjoyed this little DIY. There's another two video waiting for you to click. Don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell for more notifications, and as always, love yourself, stay motivated, peace out.